Let's build bridges. Normally, I'd build a bridge, say, across a river. So let's suppose that this blue area here is a river, and what would it mean to build a bridge across this river? Well, I'd probably put a pylon on either side, on either of the two banks, and then I'd build the bridge across those, uh, those two pylons. Here's a diagram. All right, I've got the earth, I've got the river, here are the two banks of the river, and then I can build a bridge that goes from one bank to the other, but it's attached to both banks. But I want to think about a one-sided bridge. Instead of being connected to both banks, I just want to be connected to one of the banks. Sure, so instead of building a bridge that's attached to both banks, I want to build a bridge that's just attached to one bank, and then I want to know how long can I make this bridge before it collapses. Well, I mean, look, if, if you allow me to build the bridge from some super strong metal like unobtainium, well, no problem, right? I mean, I'll just build a really, really long bridge. It's going to be no limit to how long that, that bridge could be. But that's not really what I mean, right? What I'm really going to ask you to do is to build the bridge out of these blocks, right? So you're allowed just to stack blocks on top of each other. And you know, I want the thing to be stable. I don't want it to fall over. And I want to know, if you just start stacking blocks, how long of an overhang can you get, right? What's the maximum possible overhang that you can achieve if I give you n blocks? I could try to get started just with some of these foam blocks. I could try to build a stack of these blocks and see how far I can get these blocks to overhang before they fall over. But why did my block tower just fall over? Well, the issue has to do with center of mass. My block tower is going to fall over if the center of mass isn't supported. So what I mean by that is that if the center of mass of the first block isn't supported by the second block, then that first block will fall off. If the center of mass of just the first two blocks together, which is maybe over here somewhere, isn't supported, if it isn't above the third block, then those two blocks are going to fall, my tower is going to collapse. So that's the issue. I want to build a really tall tower of blocks with a really long overhang, and yet I want it to be stable. Of course, the easiest way to make it stable is just to make my block tower perfectly vertical, but then I don't have any overhang at all. So these two forces are really working against each other, right? My desire to have a really long overhang is really playing against my desire to have my block tower not collapse. Well, let me, let me propose a specific configuration. Here's the configuration I'm proposing. So imagine that all these blocks are exactly the same. They're all one block long. And I've staggered them like this. So this first block is offset by half a block width from the second block. The second block is a quarter of a block width pushed in. The next block is a sixth pushed in. The next block is an eighth. This distance here is an eighth of a block. The next block here is a tenth of a block. If I put another block under there, I'd offset it by a twelfth of a block. The next block would be by a fourteenth of a block, then a sixteenth of a block, and so on. I need to check that that configuration is stable. So the center of mass of the top block is smack in the middle of the top block. And since I pushed the top block over half a block from the second block, that puts the center of mass of the top block right above the edge of the second block, so it's stable. What about the second block? Well, the center of mass of the second block is right in the middle of the second block. But that's not so relevant. I mean, yes, the second block isn't tipping over. But what I really need to know is what's the combined center of mass of the first block and the second block together. So to figure that out, I just need to remember that I pushed the second block over a quarter of a block from the edge of the third block, and then I could compute the center of mass of the first and the second block together, and I find out that in that case the center of mass is right there, which puts it right above the third block, which means the first two blocks together are stable. So the first block is stable, the first two blocks are stable, but that's just the top two blocks. I need to know this in general. So I need to compute the center of mass of the top n blocks relative to the right edge of the next block. And to do this, 
I'll start by averaging some center of masses. And I want to average the center of masses of the top n blocks. I don't really need to know the y coordinate of the center of masses, so I'm just going to add together the x coordinates of these center of masses, where I put the origin at the right hand edge of the block right under this stack. All right, so I'm going to add together these x coordinates. And then once I've added together these x coordinates to average them, I need to divide by n. Okay, so I just got to figure out where these blocks really are in, uh, in space. So first of all, where is block number one? Where's the top block relative to the next block under this uh, collection of the top n blocks? Well, that block's uh, center of mass is right here at one half plus a half plus a fourth plus dot 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 plus one over two n. Right, the, the center of mass, which is the block by itself, is at one half, and then this records how far over I've pushed the top block relative to the next block in the stack after the top n blocks. Okay, what about block number two? Well, that looks very similar, right? Again, it's one half, because that's where the center of mass is just in the block by itself. But the second block doesn't get pushed over a half. It gets pushed over a fourth, and then a sixth, and so on, until it's 1 over 2n. So a fourth plus a sixth plus until I get to 1 over 2n, that's how far over I pushed it relative to the next block. And a half then moves me over to the middle of block number 2. And then block number 3 has a similar looking formula. It's a half plus now a sixth plus an eighth until I get to 1 over 2n. And finally, I get to the nth block, which is right above the block that I'm measuring everything from. So its center of mass is at a half plus just how much I pushed over the nth block, which is 1 over 2n. So now I've got to look at this and see if there's anything I can say about this complicated sum. Well, I've got a half, I've got a half, I've got a half, I've got a half. Every single one of these n terms has a half. So that gives me n over 2. I've got n halves altogether. I've also got a 1 half here and no extra 1 halves. So I can add just this 1 half coming from right here. I've got a quarter here and a quarter here and then no more quarters. So I've got two quarters and I can add those. How many uh, sixths do I have? Well, I've got a sixth in here inside the dot, dot, dot. I've got a sixth here. I've got a sixth here. The next term doesn't have any sixths. So I've got three sixths altogether. And then it was going to keep on going, right? I could count how many uh, eighths I have. I could count how many uh, tenths I have, and so on. And eventually, I'll notice that I've got a 1 over 2n, a 1 over 2n, a 1 over 2n, and a 1 over 2n. I've got n uh, 2 n's. And that's it, right? That's all the terms in this sum. So then I'm dividing this whole thing by n. Well, this is a half. This is also a half. This is a half. And this is a half. Here, I've got n halves. So instead of writing a half plus 2 fourths plus 3 sixths and everything, I could just write n halves. So now I've got n over 2 plus n over 2 over n. Well, all together, right, that's just n over n. That's just 1. So relative to the right-hand edge of the next block, the center of mass of the top n blocks is right on the left-hand edge of the next block, which means it's stable. So it's stable, but now what kind of overhang can I get with that configuration? So in this case, I just used six blocks, but the total overhang is easy to calculate, right? I want to calculate the total overhang. It's the distance from the uh, left edge of the top block to the left edge of the bottom block. And it's just a half plus a fourth plus a sixth plus an eighth plus a tenth. It's the total amount that I shifted all the blocks over by. Now, if I built the same kind of configuration, but instead of six blocks, I built it with some large number, call it big N number of blocks, then this total overhang is the sum, little n from 1 to big N minus 1, of 1 over 2n. Because this is the total amount that I'd be shifting all the blocks over by. That looks like the harmonic series. And indeed, the harmonic series diverges, well, that means the sum 
of 1 over 2 to the n and goes from 1 to infinity also diverges. But that means that by choosing n big enough, I can make this overhang as large as I desire. Well, here it is in, in the real world. I've built one of these harmonic towers and you can see that I've got a pretty significant amount of overhang here. I'll rotate it a little bit and I've got this river here. Anyway, I could make the overhang as long as I'd like, as long as I'm willing to use more slabs.